the question. Do you still have your eclipse glasses hanging around? A solar spectacle is happening this weekend, and Brian Hackney fills us in on the Ring of Fire eclipse and why the Bay Area might not get the full view, but it is still worth looking to the sky. Professor Jeff Matthews is climbing into this. The observatory housing a 16-inch computer-controlled telescope at Foothill College. It just got this fantastic photo of the sun. He does light up about anything solar. I, I don't think I've ever taken a picture of my dessert, but the sun so many times. But he has never seen this, an annular eclipse. People have described it as, as a golden ring in the sky. They just sound amazingly beautiful events. That was amazing. That was absolutely amazing. I'm at a loss for words. It happens when the moon is a bit too far away to stage a total solar eclipse, so the moon doesn't block the sun completely. Instead, it leaves a ring of fire, or annular eclipse, for a few precious minutes, and it's happening Saturday morning. But you can only see that golden ring in a path 120 miles wide, crossing the western U.S. before moving through Central and South America. From the Bay Area, it'll only be seen as a partial solar eclipse. And to see what it'll look like here... Hello, I'm Toshi Komatsu, and I'd like to welcome you to the De Anza College Planetarium. This is where all of our astronomy classes on campus are taught right here in this room using our star projector, which is there in the center of the room. And what we've set up on the planetarium dome here is the view that we would get as seen from the point on Earth of greatest eclipse. But again, we won't see this in the Bay Area. Instead, we're starting off at 8 in the morning here. This is the view that we get from Cupertino. We got a little bite that's taken out, a little bit more, a little bit more. And what we're going to end up seeing at the time of greatest eclipse this is what the sun will look like. We'll have a crescent of sun still visible. So what it will end up appearing like is uh, kind of like the, the moon partially photobombing the sun. Now, the most important thing about the Saturday morning eclipse, never look directly at it. If you are ever able to see the surface of the sun directly, you need uh, solar filters like this that let you safely observe the sun directly. And indirectly, you can just use your nearest tree. A, a family member sent me a great picture from 2017 where they were viewing the eclipse underneath a tree. Every one of those gaps through the leaves ended up forming a little image of the eclipse on the ground. I had taken a picture like that of the 2017 eclipse. You did that too? Yeah. It was just fantastic. It'll be impressive as a partial eclipse in the Bay Area. But it's at least a seven-hour drive to see the annular eclipse. You know, a seven-hour drive for a once-in-a-lifetime event? Sure. I'd say go for it. Plus, you know, there's all kinds of fun stuff to do along the way. <laughs> and next stop, total eclipse. Next stop, total eclipse. That'll happen in six months. That's right. A total eclipse in the U.S. next April. This weekend, just a preview, but well worth watching. It's just not directly.